I think we better be going, Bob. Why? Your mother and father aren't going to worry about you now. Not a week away from our wedding. I might as well start talking like a wife right now. You've got an 8 o'clock appointment in the morning and you can't sell Mr. Davidson those refrigerators unless you're wide awake. Mercenary, you're marrying me for my commissions. Dad says you're a sound young man with a promising future in the appliance business. That's why I'm marrying you. Your dad's a great guy, Lynn. I only hope I can be half as good a husband for you as I'm sure he's been for your mother. What's the matter? I... I don't really know. But somehow things haven't... well, felt just right at home lately. I've even been wondering if our going to get married has something to do with it. Why don't you ask him if there's something wrong? I'm going to. That's the real reason I want to get home early. things that are meaningful to a young couple about to marry, few are more important than a sense of security and happiness in the homes they are about to leave. Of course, I knew nothing about it at the time, but later when Lynn Murdoch mentioned it to me, I understood her fears that something was wrong at home and appreciated how disturbing it was to a girl just one week before the date set for her marriage. there isn't any purpose, any reason for us to stay together after Lynn's marriage. Why bring Lynn into this? Because all I've been is a mother. You haven't had time for a wife ever since your business became more important than our marriage. Well, let's not get dramatic. And let's not do anything to spoil Lynn's happiness. Don't worry. We'll go on keeping up a front for her sake. But once she and Bob have moved to Springfield, I'm not going to go on pretending to be a happy wife just because it's good for business. Look, Dorothy, I never said you had to do anything for my business. You never let me help. Even when you're home, you never discuss your problems with me. Well, maybe I want to forget them. And maybe I don't want to be a part-time wife anymore. Even when you touch me, it's like, like something mechanical, not like something that means anything to you. Okay, we'll have it your way. Give the kids a chance to get squared away and we'll have Ben Foster draw up a property settlement. I just hope we can be civilized about this whole mess. Oh, yes. At least we can be civilized with each other. Honestly, Lynn, I never thought that business school would pay off. Then, all of a sudden, I had my first job. That's wonderful, Peggy. I'll bet you could get a job there, too, if you'd change your mind about marrying that brother of mine. I don't want to change my mind. What is it, Lynn? Oh, now, wait a minute. It's okay if you and Bob fight a little. But you can't go home to Mother till after you're married. I won't be able to then. You've lost me, Lynn. Have you and Bob really quarreled? No, he doesn't even know yet. All right. Suppose you tell old Annie Peg all about it. Peggy, my parents are planning to get divorced. I heard them talking last night. They're just waiting until Bob and I get married. Your mom and dad? But, well, they've always seemed so... Well, I've been running over here since we were both in junior high, and I always thought they were happy. I guess I just took things for granted until lately. 
Things have seemed different these last few weeks. Before that, it was just the usual quarrels once in a while. All married people quarrel. Mostly for the fun of making up, I suppose. I'm sorry, Lynn. I didn't mean to joke about this. But are you sure your folks are serious about a divorce? Yes. I couldn't see them, but I did hear them. It was more than just a quarrel. Well, have you said anything to them? What do you say to your mom and dad when they don't love each other anymore? Makes you wonder if any love really lasts. Of course it does, Lynn. Maybe your folks still love each other, even if they don't realize it. You didn't hear them, Peggy. It, it was just terrible. Well, at least they won't do anything until after you and Bob are married. Something could change things before then. I've been wondering what would happen if Bob and I didn't get married now. I wish your parents were here now so we could talk this thing out together. I've just realized how little either of them have been home these last few months. Dad had some business dinner tonight, and, and Mom's club is planning some kind of a charity drive. Well, we won't keep them at home together by postponing our marriage. It might make things even worse for your parents. I sure don't want to postpone our marriage. You should know that. But I want to help Mom and Dad, too. Lynn, there's another angle. It might be best if your parents did separate for a while. They'd both be lonesome, and it could bring them together again. My mother and father you're talking about, Bob. My home. I don't want it broken up. Lynn, I want to help, too. But how do we really know what's best for your parents? No use their being miserable for the rest of their lives. Is that the way you'd feel about our marriage? We won't let anything like that happen to us. Mom and Dad, maybe they thought that, too. Lynn, we can't live somebody else's life. You don't know all that's happened to them along the way, even if they are your parents. We have to build our marriage on what we have now. Oh, I love you, Bob. But all of a sudden, I'm scared. If this could happen to Mom and Dad, it could happen to us. We could get hit by a truck on the way to church, too. But we can't stop living our lives just because of what might happen next week or tomorrow or in the next 60 seconds. I love you, and I'm going to do everything I can to make our marriage happy. Somehow you never think of your parents being like this. Very close in each other's arms. But Mom said it. It was just mechanical with Dad now. I don't know what to do. For a kid who's starting her first job in the morning, you're up kind of late, aren't you? Lynn told me about her folks this afternoon, and I'm worried. So am I. Well, you're not going to postpone the wedding, are you? Not if I can help it. I'm trying to talk her into cutting out right now and skipping all that entertainment at the church. Getting married in church means something, Bob. Yeah, I know. To all the old middle-aged women that want to come and sob into their handkerchiefs. It means a lot to our folks. Yeah, I know. And it's even more important for you and Lynn to get started in the right way. We sure are, aren't we? You know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. You haven't outgrown it yet, have you, kid? No, but you've changed. You haven't been to church with us since you finished school. Maybe I had too much church while I was growing up around here. But let's save that for another night, shall we? Right now, I've got bigger problems. Okay, but I want to help if I can, Bob. I did introduce you to. Thanks, sis. But don't take too much credit. Remember, I saw her myself the first time I came home from college, and she was all elbows and knees and pedal pushers. <laughs> that isn't the look you had in your eye when I introduced you last year. No, but as I tell my appliance dealers, our line of merchandise and packaging has improved considerably in the last couple of years. But I think you can help us, sis. Try and keep her from worrying so much about her parents. They're not the only ones that have ever talked about a divorce. 
How would you feel if it were our mom and dad? Another wedding present. I think this one's from George and Sue. Mom, did we have to send out all these announcements? Well, the list just kept growing. After we had all the family friends and relatives, your father came up with almost as many business friends. I think Bob was right all along not to have a big wedding. Oh, there's nothing to be nervous about. You won't even know all those people are there. And the church rehearsal will help a lot. Mom, why were you and Dad married in church? We've never gone to church except at Christmas and Easter. Well, most people do get married in church. And don't you think it's nicer than standing up before some justice of the peace? Well, has, has being married in church ever made any difference to you and Dad? Why, of course, dear. And that's why we want you to have a nice wedding, too. Noble's son, Art, delivering your dress. She finished the alterations last night. Do, uh, do you still want me to wear your wedding dress, Mom? Well, why shouldn't I? Don't you want to? Mom, let's surprise Dad. Why don't you put your wedding dress on when he comes home, just to show him you can still wear it? Oh, I couldn't do that. It, it's already been altered. Oh, not that much. Besides... We're both much too busy to be playing surprises. I've got two million things to do before the wedding. Your bridegroom isn't here yet. Not getting overconfident, is he? He'll be here in a few minutes. He had a late call to make. Well, time enough for excuses like that after the marriage. Excuses aren't necessary if two people want to be together. Of course not, Twig. I know you and Bob will be that way. How can anybody know whether a marriage will work out? Yours will. Just believe in it. Did you and Mom believe in it when you were married? I, I suppose so. Hey, you're getting pretty solemn tonight, aren't you? I was just thinking before you came in, this will be my room for just five more nights. You'll always be my little girl. I know, Daddy, but things won't be the same. Oh, but the things that count won't be changed. They haven't since I... since I first looked at you through that glass window at the hospital. Daddy, I want to build a home of my own with Bob... But I want this home to be here, too. Not just to come back to, but to feel good inside of me because I know it's here. You'll always have a home, Twig. I don't mean just a house or a room with my furniture in it. I love this house, but I wouldn't care too much if you moved. Because you and Mom are my home, wherever you live. Sure, Twig. And a big part of our hearts will always be with you, no matter what happens. Lynn, dear, Bob's here. I sure wish this rehearsal were the real thing. I wish we'd gone away like you wanted to. Yeah, but too many people got in the act. But that's okay, hon. The results will still be the same, and that's what counts. Hello, Lynn. Hello, Pastor. Hi, Bob. Pastor. It's good to see you both again. You know, it really isn't necessary to wait for a wedding rehearsal to come to church. No, but it's a pretty good reason, isn't it, Pastor Martin? 
No, I'll buy any reason. But if I can help in any way, besides performing the ceremony, please let me know. Very often, young couples like to come in and talk with me. I'd very much like to have a talk with both of you. Thanks, Pastor. Uh, shall we get going with the rehearsal? Very well. Now, I guess you've already practiced coming down the aisle. Can you do it without tripping, Lynn? At least in this dress. Good. Bob, you and I and your best man will wait in the sacristy just before the ceremony. And uh, there's another door out the back way in case you change your mind. And I'll have a car waiting out there, too. Well, let's assume you haven't changed your mind and that the lovely bride has already come down the aisle. Undoubtedly, you've heard the marriage vows spoken a number of times. But they'll have a wonderful new meaning for you when you repeat them after me at your own wedding. I've always looked upon a wedding rehearsal as something more than a matter of mechanics. It's meaningful to think about the marriage vow before we finally say the words. And to understand more fully what it means to have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part. I hope you'll both think about those words between now and the day of your wedding, so that they'll mean to you what God intends them to mean. I know what they mean, Pastor. They mean to love and to cherish until we don't love each other anymore, until we're too busy until we're tired of each other and want to give up. Can I talk with you, dear? I'm sorry I didn't discuss it with you, but I had a feeling you knew. So did your father. But I guess neither one of us wanted to recognize it. We were only trying to protect you, dear. To keep anything from spoiling your wedding. I know, Mama. I... I'm sorry I couldn't go through with it. Well, don't blame yourself. Sure, I blame myself. Because I can't be sophisticated and civilized the way you and Dad are. <sighs> Lynn, please. I'm sorry I'm not grown up enough to stop wanting my parents to be together. To love each other. Marriages break up sometimes. And there doesn't seem to be anything we can do about it. But I know that you and Bob will... I know. Our marriage will be different. But why should it be? What will make Bob and me any different from you and Dad? We had the same dreams you had. The same kind of bodies. What will keep us together that didn't keep you together? Lynn, most marriages do work out. You know that. How do I know it? Maybe they work out because it's easier than doing something about it. Or because it's good business. Or because people are pretending like you and Dad. Lynn, please. Don't judge marriage by what happened to your father and me. I don't know why it happened. I didn't want it to happen. I still don't. But there just doesn't seem to be anything we can do about it. But maybe this will help you and Bob in, in ways that you can't see right now. Maybe you'll be more careful about your own marriage. I'm sorry, Mom. But if this is all marriage means to you and Dad, I don't want any part of it. <laughs> It doesn't make sense. It won't help your parents now if we don't get married. I'm not thinking of my parents now. I'm thinking about us. I love you, Bob. But loving each other and wanting each other, maybe it isn't enough to make a marriage last. What else is there in this crazy world of ours? Lynn, I've known a lot of girls, but it's something special with you, something I wanted to last. I don't know what I want. I really don't. 
But I know there must be something we haven't found. I've seen their wedding pictures. Mom was more attractive than I am. I think she still is. And I'm sure Dad felt the same way about her as you feel about me. But what happened? Why did they lose each other? Marriage isn't going to fail as an institution just because your mother and father couldn't make a go of it. It's still a pretty wonderful thing, Lynn, regardless of all the divorce headlines. Well, it's different when it happens to your parents. So is a heart attack or cancer, but you can't live your life in fear and trembling. You might as well jump off the highest bridge. Listen, Lynn, let's not be fools. Let's take what we've got now while we've still got a chance. We can hold on to it. Please, Bob. No more talking. Okay, maybe it won't work. the other one over here so I can throw it back at you. Isn't it time you came to Sister Peg for a little advice about that large hole in your head? Well, I've tried everything else. I don't see how you could do any worse. I wish you would talk to her, though. I'm sure not getting through. I don't think I would either. I suppose not. Maybe I should just let her alone, see if she can work it out for herself. That's a very original idea. Well, I haven't heard anything better from Sister Peg. Will you promise not to crank down your hearing aid if I say something you don't agree with? Go ahead. It's on full blast. At the rehearsal the other night, I heard Pastor Martin offer to counsel with you and Lynn. And, and neither of you paid any attention to him. Bob, did the idea ever penetrate that thick skull of yours that Pastor Martin might have the answer Lynn's looking for? There's been too much church in this thing already. Leave that hearing aid alone, boy. You're not afraid to find out you've been wrong about some things, are you? That's got nothing to do with it. Then you're not afraid to talk to the pastor. Okay, what can we lose? I'll try it if you can talk Lynn into it. That's your department, big brother. Lynn, there is an ingredient missing from many marriages. True, they don't all fail because of it, but neither are they as rich and complete as they could be. Then you're not talking about love, are you, Pastor? We were, weren't we? And I am talking about love in another dimension. Well, how do you define love, Pastor Martin? Well, I've been in love myself for just about 30 years. And I'm still not sure I know enough about it to try my hand at a definition. I doubt that my wife would try it either. Well, then there's no way to predict a successful marriage. No, not absolutely. But if it's built on the right foundation, you can be pretty sure. Mom and Dad thought they had the right foundation. They were fine, intelligent people. They both loved each other. Dad had a good job, and then... Well, they both loved me. What were they missing, Pastor? Do you want me to tell you frankly? Yes, of course. I'm afraid their marriage was not built on a common religious faith. A living faith in Christ as Lord and Savior. A faith which motivated their everyday thinking and behavior. You see, a Christian marriage binds more than two hands in holy wedlock. It binds two hearts which have become one through a deep religious faith. A faith in the same God, the same Christ, the same heaven. In many marriage that has broken up, I'm afraid that such a faith, mutually shared and mutually practiced, was the missing ingredient. Don't you have divorces in your own church, Pastor? Very few, I'm happy to say. We do have our family difficulties. But as a rule, two people who have the same goal in life, I mean the same ultimate goal, We'll find a way of walking toward that goal together. Pastor, do you think that Bob and I... do you think that we could have a successful marriage? 
If each of you gives Christ the first place in your heart, and if both of you determine that come what may, he'll be given the first place in your home. It's marriages like that that are made in heaven. Dorothy. We've got to find a way to patch things together somehow. Or we're going to ruin Lynn's life, too. We haven't done so already. Yes. We have to do something, Harvey. But it's got to be better than we did before. Or Lynn won't buy it. Yeah, things are pretty bad. Hey, this isn't fair. Here I am home early for a change. You weren't even here to pour my coffee. I've been walking. Bob and I are going to be married next week in church, just as we planned. Oh. oh, that's wonderful. It will be wonderful, Mother. We've been talking to Pastor Martin. Now I'm not afraid. Bob and I are going to have a Christian marriage. Oh, Mother, Daddy, I'm so happy. What God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Yes, my friends, what God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. I just can't believe how good God's been to me. He's given me family, friends, joys, and oh, so much more, even now. And just think, the best is yet to come. You know, for all of us, there's much more to life than just being alive. minute losing it. Graduation's a month away and I still haven't found a college. I'm excited but scared. Thank God there's more to life than just ups and downs. He's the one thing that's safe and secure. You know, there's more to life than just being alive. Hi, I'm World Turtle and the whole world is my home. Yours, too, when you think about it. So it makes sense to care about people all over the world and to give our neighbors a helping hand, not just when there's an earthquake or flood, but any time we can find better ways to grow food or keep children from getting sick. So let's keep on working together for a better world. Slow and steady wins the race. This program has been presented by the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, with congregations throughout the United States and Canada, and is dedicated to the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God and Savior of the world. Mm -hmm.